Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and I just wanted to share with you a few books that I recently picked up. Um, actually today, um, I had some books to get rid of so I took a few trips to Goodwill and um, a local used bookshop that's run independently and it's super cute and uh, the lady there is just super sweet and charming and so I try to support her whenever I can. So I just kind of treated myself today. And so I have 13 books to talk about today. The first book that I have to show you today is The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. Um, obviously this is a well-known author at this point. She is best known for Big Little Lies and I haven't read any books by her as of yet. And I also have not seen the TV show Big Little Lies either. They actually had a copy of Big Little Lies at the store, but this one was a little cheaper and I just decided to start here. I don't know if that was a mistake. I don't know if this is a good one to start with with her, but Leanne Moriarty, from what I understand, writes um, kind of what would be considered chick lit mysteries, I think, um, chick lit thrillers. This book follows the story of a husband and a wife and the wife stumbles upon a letter written by her husband for her and the letter is supposed to be opened upon his death and I think she reads it early, she somehow finds it and the letter carries a deep dark secret that is potentially going to destroy their lives together and it was not intended to be read while he is still alive and I think um, that's what happens. The thriller genre is a genre that I have been looking to get into more and so we'll see how this one falls with me. I know she's a highly beloved author and so we'll give it a go. The next book I have to show you is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This is considered a classic novel. It is one that a lot of people have to read in school. Um, I did not read this book in school, but I've always been intrigued by it. This book follows a young lady's descent into madness and you get to see the things that um, are going on inside her head, the life events that kind of lead to her mental breakdown. And I know it's a hard hitting one. I know it's a dark book. And it's one that I've always wanted to read sometime in my life. So there we go, The Bell Jar. The next book I have to show you is also a thriller, and this is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. And I picked this up because I know I had seen it somewhere on booktube, and now I can't remember if I saw it in a positive light or a negative light. <laughs> so we're gonna find out. But again, trying to pick up thrillers, trying to figure out what I like in a thriller. But this is about another married couple actually, um, a more domestic thriller and it is about Luis who is a single mom and she has a kind of wild and crazy night out and she kisses this man named David and then later finds out he's actually her new boss so that's kind of awkward and that David is also married to a lady named Adele and Adele is actually someone who Luis has also already befriended in like a random way they got coffee together and so she becomes kind of part of their lives and sees the marriage between David and Adele and starts to uncover some sketchy things about the marriage and there are just some secrets and some uh, broken things in their marriage and Luis somehow becomes a part of this. Again, I can't figure out where I saw this book and why I felt compelled to pick it up, but there we go, another thriller on my bookshelf. This next book I know virtually nothing about, but it is a nonfiction book about music and so I had to pick it up and it's about Bach and Frederick the Great and it is called Evening in the Palace of Reason by James R. Gaines. What also caught my eye about this book is that Frederick the Great was also a flutist and actually uh, wrote some pieces for flute as well and I am a flutist that is my main instrument and this sounds interesting. At first I couldn't really figure out if this was fiction or nonfiction. I'm pretty sure it's nonfiction. But the little blurb here I'll just read to you says one Sunday evening in the spring of his seventh year as king as his musicians were gathering for the evening concert a courtier brought Frederick the Great his usual list of arrivals at the town gate. As he looked down the list of names he gave a start. Gentlemen he said old Bach is here. Those who heard him said there was a kind of agitation in his voice. But I think the idea behind this book also is old 
meet new so the age of baroque music which would be represented by Bach meets the new age of classicism in the age of enlightenment represented by Frederick the Great. So I found this book and thought it was really unique. I'd never seen this book before or heard about it so I have no idea if it's good or not but maybe something to pick up for a non-fiction readathon or just when I'm in the mood to read about some composers. I kind of had non-fiction November in my mind when I picked this up so maybe I can uh, work it into my November TBR and let you know what I think. The next book I have to show you is very exciting. I have been collecting Brandon Sanderson books slowly and I haven't actually read a Brandon Sanderson book yet but I found this really good condition copy of the floppy edition of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson and like I said I have not actually started reading Brandon Sanderson I now have um, Skyward and I have Elantris and now I have this one but I'm not sure if I can read this one without having read some of the other books in the Cosmere um, I believe this is a new series and maybe I could start there let me know because I'm, I'm not sure but this is a very widely loved epic fantasy you can see it's humongous. I'm not even going to try to figure out what the story is because I probably just need to go into it and figure it out as I read it. But I have a lot of high expectations in my head for Brandon Sanderson and so this was just a really nice copy and I definitely don't want to get a hardback of these because I can't handle reading a hardback of this. It will, it's just a brick. I can't take them anywhere. <laughs> They're just too heavy. And so I am, I'm really excited that I found a copy of this for pretty cheap. I also picked up a second book by Brandon Sanderson and that is Warbreaker. This one I believe is one of his more earlier works and this one is a standalone. Um, I think it's in its own universe or it might be part of the Cosmere also, I'm not sure. But I've heard that this is a good place to start with Brandon Sanderson. So I might even pick this one up first. Actually, I'm probably going to pick up Skyward first because um, Star Sight is going to be coming out in November. But maybe this will be my second Brandon Sanderson book. I've heard very good things about this one. The next book I picked up was a completely blind pick. Never heard of this book, but it looked interesting. And that is The Master Butcher's Singing Club by Louise Erdrich. And this is a historical fiction novel. Really, the singing club is what got my attention. Um, surprise, surprise. <laughs> you put music in a book and I can't resist it, apparently. This book is about a man who returns home from World War I and he comes back home to his German village and marries the pregnant widow of his best friend who was killed in action. With a suitcase full of sausages and a master butcher's precious knife set, Fidelis sets out for America. In Argus, North Dakota, he builds a business, a home for his family, and a singing club consisting of the best voices in town. When the old world meets the new, in the person of Delphine Vatska, the great adventure of Fidelis' life begins. Delphine meets Ava, which is his wife, I believe, and is enchanted. She meets Fidelis, and the ground trembles. <laughs> These momentous encounters will determine the course of Delphine's life and the tra trajector wow, trajectory of this beautiful novel. So, I don't know. <laughs> part of it sounds a little cheesy, but then part of me was like, yes, historical fiction. I need more historical fiction, and this one has music in it, so we'll give it a go. I don't know. It was like $2, so who can say no to that? I have sneezed like three times while filming this video, so these old used books are super dusty. Speaking of dusty, Dusty. <laughs> Hi, Dusty. How's it going? You read any good books lately? Do you have anything to say to the people, Dusty? Good talk. The next book I have to talk about is a booktube favorite and it was something I didn't really know the premise of until I picked it up at the store and I looked at the back and I had no idea that this book also had some musicians in it. But this is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. You've probably seen this one around. It's been a favorite on booktube. This is an apocalyptic book. It follows a world in which a flu pandemic has um, basically wiped out civilization and then 20 years later we have this character named Kirsten 
and she moves between the settlements of the altered world with a small troupe of actors and musicians. They call themselves the Traveling Symphony, and they've dedicated themselves to keeping the remnants of art and humanity alive. But when they arrive in St. Deborah by the water, they encounter a violent prophet who will threaten the tiny band's existence. I had no idea this was about musicians and actors. I didn't even realize that. I just knew this was a post-apocalyptic novel and that it has very high praise. And so I'm 10 times more interested in this book now that I know that. The next book I have to show you is The Silmarillion. I think I pronounced that correctly, by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is kind of funny because I actually brought my copy of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit to the used bookstore to trade in. Not because I want to not have The Lord of the Rings, but because I want to get better copies of it. And so I traded in some Lord of the Rings books and then picked up another one. <laughs> I thought this copy was, was decent, but this is a prequel to The Hobbit. And apparently Tolkien considered this book his most important work and it was published posthumously actually, but it is a collection of tales and legends that are supposed to set the stage for his um, Middle Earth world. So now all I need to do is get those nicer copies of The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And so I'm planning on actually rereading The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And so hopefully after I reread those books, I will then continue on to this book. So I'm really excited that I now own this book. The next book I found was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I'm not gonna lie, I've basically only picked up this book because this is one of Jesse the Reader's favorite books and I really like Jesse the Reader as a booktuber and I was really excited to find a nice hard copy of this for like three dollars I think I paid for it and it has a lot of really creepy photos all over it. I believe these are actually um, real photos that he kind of uh, strung together to tell his story which just sounds um, really, really interesting. But this is about an abandoned orphanage and a strange collection of peculiar photographs. And I'm just picking this book up based off of its popularity and recommendation from Jesse the Reader. Next up, I have a thriller, and that is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I actually thought I had already owned this book, but apparently I don't. But I feel like you always see a copy of this in your used bookstore whenever you have, like anywhere in the world. An incredibly popular book and story and movie. Um, I don't know the premise at all and I don't want to know the premise. And obviously this is an author with a lot of street cred in the thriller world. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that one. Probably everyone knows what this is about other than myself. <laughs> so let's just go, go into it blindly, shall we? Next up, I picked up Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is a classic that I have seen a lot of booktubers read. This book takes place in an isolated gray stone mansion on the windswept Cornish coast. As the second Mrs. Maxim de Winter recalls the chilling events that transpired as she began her new life as the young bride of a husband she barely knew. For at every corner of every room, were phantoms of a time dead but not forgotten, a past devotedly preserved by the sinister housekeeper, Mrs. Danvers, a sweet, immaculate, and untouched, clothing laid out and ready to be worn, but not by any of the great house's current occupants. With an eerie presentiment of evil tightening her heart, the second Mrs. De Winter walked in the shadow of her mysterious predecessor, Determined to uncover the darkest secrets and shattering truths about Maxim's first wife, the late and hauntingly beautiful Rebecca. This sounds absolutely perfect for a fall read. It sounds a little bit spooky. Maybe there's a haunting. I'm probably totally off on this, but it sounds like a really good fall or winter read. And so I'll have to pick that up when I'm in the mood for that sort of thing. And the final book I have to talk about today is book one in the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. It is called The Fifth Season. And this is another book you've probably seen around. I was just really surprised to find so many more popular books at my tiny, tiny used bookstore. Um, apparently people in my area are reading some decent books, but then getting rid of them. 
ridiculous. But this is a highly anticipated read for me. This book is actually the winner of the Hugo Award in 2016 and I have only heard good things about this series. In the back says, this is the way the world ends for the last time. It starts with the great red rift across the heart of the world's sole continent, spewing ash that blots out the sun. It starts with death, with a murdered son and a missing daughter. It starts with betrayal and long dormant wounds rising up to fester. This is the stillness, a land familiar with catastrophe, where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy. Really excited to get into this one. This is just a book that I've heard wonderful things about and an author who I have been interested in and have had my eye on and so here we go. I'm excited about this one. Those are all the books that I've recently picked up at my local used bookstore. I'm really excited about this haul. I feel like I got a lot of books that I have had my eye on for a long time and so I guess if you just wait long enough they will show up at your local used bookstore. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed watching my video today and uh, let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know if you recommend any of these books, if you think I should immediately start with some of them. I hope you're having a great day or night. Keep reading great books and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.